Let's do it. What's up, Melanated family? So check it out, man. I have um, this video that I want to show y'all real quick. And I want to use this video as a lesson to the family, right? Because we, if if anybody that's listening to me is my age or older, I'm, I'm, I'm in my early 40s. We didn't have to deal with terms like bullying, right? When we, 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 when we were younger, there was people who there was dudes at school, possibly who would pick on someone who they felt was weaker for whatever reason, pick on someone because they was an asshole. You know what I mean? That that was kind of how we define bullying. I don't recall this term being used so frequently. Right. So I have a video that I'm going to show you guys. Uh, this is a high school in. Hold on one second, family, because this is important for our fathers and for and for, you know what I mean? Our our fathers to have an understanding of some things we can do to prevent or put our kids in the best position possible to avoid certain things. Right. So let's get into it. So this is in four four dice are. Uh, four dice arkansas which is a really small town in arkansas and basically this black kid is is getting um uh, quote unquote bullied but in actuality this white kid in the locker room is just pressing him to fight he keeps trying to press him to fight press him to fight i'm gonna show y'all the fight real quickly here and then we're gonna get into it because in my opinion family i think fathers can do a pretty good job of preventing their children preventing their sons, daughters too, but sons primarily for being in situations like this, right? Because this shouldn't have happened. Now, this young man, this is a um, just a warning on the video. The young man passed out after he had to fight with the uh, with the white kid. Um, he was unconscious, you know what I mean? So um, um, that may be hard to watch, but there's a point that I'm trying to make here, family. So let's take a look at it. Let's see. Hold on one second. All right, so watch this video. I'm going to give my commentary during the video. And we're going to break it down to how fathers can do a pretty good job of preventing situations like this from happening to their sons. Let's get into it. Give me one second here. All right, let's go, family. <laughs> <laughs> you hear what the white kid wait what's, what's going on with the volume you hear what the white kid said he said i you said you want to fight now you acting like a bitch is what the white kid said to him hold on one second <laughs> And he called him a bitch again. This is all important, family. <laughs> See, so as so uh, real quick. I'm not an advocate of violence or teaching your children any type of violence, right? But, we, and this ain't even a race thing. We need to make sure our sons primarily is in a position like mentally to be able to protect themselves, to be in a, in, a, in a confident state of being so they can be able to protect themselves. So if you see this video, this white kid has basically told him, we was supposed to fight, called him a bitch a few times, right? So as a man, what you, what you begin to learn as a man and as you get older and you like go through your maturation process in this world and you begin to work hard and figure shit out respect is big like if if <laughs> especially between two men if a man feels like he can disrespect you who knows what the fuck he gonna do you know what i mean so when we talk about bullying again when we was younger there was no such thing as bullying let me say this real quick. When we were younger, there was no such thing as bullying. Like I said, there was a dude who was older or a dude who was an asshole or a dude who spotted somebody that was weak and they would fuck with him. And we never called it that per se, but we seen people getting picked on. You know what I mean? But this is a situation that I want y'all to look at. This young man, this looks like a black kid. He, maybe he's mixed or something. 
you know, in this high school in Arkansas is like primarily black as well. You know what I mean? So I don't think it's a race thing. This is just our young men need to know how to protect themselves. This is something that I'm realizing. Like as fathers, some men may be aware of this and they be on it. Um, but in general, we need to be cognizant of this from the time that they're younger. So let's get into it real quick. I want to kind of dissect how this young man is allowing this dude to treat him. Give me, give me one second. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, you better back up. I'm not in the mood for this. So he's obviously scared, right? Let's keep it real. So he's obviously scared. I'm going to get into in a minute some things a father can actually do, physical things a father can do to put his young man in a better position to be able to protect himself. But he's obviously scared, right? So look. You're always not in the mood. And fear can be smelled, just so you know. He's still scared. He's still scared. He's retreating. His whole approach is retreat. You know what I mean? And man, look, here, let's let's finish watching this video. And then I'll tell you. Watch, watch what ended up happening to this young man simply because he's retreating. And again, I don't know. I don't know. Really pause real quick. I don't know if this young dude got a father in his life. He could have both parents at home right now. That's not the point I'm making. If if we go put our kids, our young men in the best position to protect themselves, some young dude just got this shit already. But as fathers, I think we can help. One of the main things we can do when it comes to like putting our kids in the best position possible to be confident, to, to just have an understanding that they can defend themselves, have an understanding that they can have a voice, you know what I mean, is making sure we're in the same home, making sure we're around them enough to see them in all aspects of their life, just so we can get a clear understanding of who they are, you know what I mean? So here, watch a little bit of this, and, 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 and again, the end of it, um, the young black brother is going to be unconscious, he going he gonna, to shit, shake him unconscious, but... I want everybody to see, especially if you got sons. He's retreating. He's pretty much running. He's pretty much running. Got his head over with. Now he's asleep. Damn. All right, look. So here's the thing, right? I think there's actually something we can do as men to prevent this type of shit from happening. Again, like I said, some young dude just ain't going to allow that shit to happen to him, regardless of who they is, they got a daddy in their life or any of that, right? But I think one of the biggest ways we can make sure our kid is confident enough, because sometimes when I'm looking at and that young dude, he's just not confident. Right. He don't believe in himself for whatever reason. Right. Men. It's this is an example of how important it is for us to be in our kids lives from the time that they from 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 conception, like from when they're born on up. So you can get an idea of the temperament of your kid. If you got a kid that's not aggressive, that's not confrontational, you know that shit. You know that shit. Like from once they start walking and start interacting with other children, you quickly learn what type of child that you have. And that's cool. But you have to be around your kid. You have to be um, in all of these situations with them so you can know how they respond to certain shit. And we got to make sure that they're confident. The confidence that you can instill in your child, your son, can come in many ways. Again, this starts when they start walking, right? This is positive affirmations about things they're doing that's good, complimenting them, things like that, right? Also, putting them in masculine situations. Like, if, of course, you, you daddy, and you're going to be around, but if you got like a night out or a day out where it's just you and your cousins or you and your brothers, bring him in environments that are masculine so he can know kind of the pecking order of how men do shit, right? All, I think all of this can help with the quote unquote bullying. I'm gonna get into the bullying shit here in a minute, but I think all of this can help with 
your son not being prey in an environment like this, right? Because like I said, I think this is actually like a primarily black school for the most part. Also, something I just learned, it, I think if your son is non-confrontational or not, you need to put him in some kind of boxing. Put him in boxing. My, uh, 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 <laughs> martial arts is bullshit. Don't 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 put your kid in martial arts family. He he ever get he uh, try that shit on the street and get and get everything knocked up out of his ass. Put your son in boxing. Put your son in boxing. Put your son in football. Put your son in basketball. Like competitive, uh, uh, male like really really masculine environments is a good way to prevent this. You know what I mean? Again, the temperament of your kid that's gonna be whatever, but. What just happened to this young man happened strictly because he was scared. It happened strictly because he, from the onset, didn't want no problems. And we have to ask ourselves, right, like in the world, we don't want our kids to um, endure any type of violence. But you always want to make sure your kid can protect themselves. Like that, as, your, as the father, as the man, that's actually your job to dissect what type of personality you have in your child and as a young child like as a young kid instill different mechanisms to make sure he understands how to address a man basically you know what i mean because they talk all this bullying shit but most of the time it's just a kid who um feels he has an advantage over somebody or a kid who dealing with some shit itself you know what i mean but we in life not just as a teenager speaking about your son right now not just as a teenager but in life he's gonna have to be prepared to defend itself not always with violence but just with your voice just with your actions you see what i'm saying and this is like uh, uh, what happened in this video to this young man and um my prayers go out to him and his family he's he was unconscious like the video the the news report said they don't know how long he was conscious um, just to give y'all some backstory real quick, the white kid and the black kid, they didn't have their name in the article, um, at this high school, again, it's four dice high school in, 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 in Arkansas is where this took place. The kids protested the, the I think that's one of the main reasons the article was written that I wrote, I mean, that I, uh, uh, um, 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 read because the kids protested because after what you just saw, right. And that was the entire fight that you just saw after what you just saw. Both kids were suspended for 10 days. So some of the students felt like, wait a minute, the black kid, I mean, he ain't even want no smoke. And y'all suspended him. And, and that's whatever. I don't really think he should have gotten 10 days. I mean, that's that's whatever. The bigger point that I wanted to make is our children need to be confident. Our young men need to be confident. And again, I don't know if this young dude don't have a father in his home. But if he do, as soon as he get home, Pop's got to jump in there. Pops got to jump in there. And sometimes, man, look, sometime in our community, I bring this to y'all because sometime in our community and I'm shit, I'm always speaking for myself and my personal experiences to a degree. But being young, having kids, not sometimes there's things that you miss. Sometimes there's things that you didn't know needed to be paid attention to as, as much as other things. You know what I mean? And for a young man like this, if he just lived with his mom, then of course, like I said before, that's on a woman to say, hey, I'm gonna find you a mentor. I'm gonna find you an uncle, a cousin, if Pops isn't around, right? But I'm I'm realizing slowly but surely, hold on one second, let me, let me remove this shit. Stop sharing, there we go. All right, so we need to like, as the men, our community the men in our families right there's there's a lot of things in particular that is actually your job as a man and i'm not speaking specifically about finances and stability and things of that nature which that that can come into play and this these should be things you're striving to do but in essence like the protection mechanism this is something that i had to learn as a man not having a pops and just being a certain type of dude you know what i mean the women need to feel protected like the 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 females around you cousins your wife your your daughters all the women around you need to feel protected it starts to me with a father in it and and his young man and him talking to the young man and putting his son in positions in situations where he has to like appreciate his masculine side he has to pretty much see what the fuck he made of you see what i'm saying 
Because again, this young man in that video, he was scared. He was scared. He was scared at that age. I think he should have been in boxing already. His dad should know the type of temperament he got. Now, of course, I always give the disclaimer. These videos are short. It could have been sick. There could have been some insinuating circumstance that we didn't see. But from everything I researched, that's exactly how it played out. And they call that bullying when in actuality, bullies, most bullies, like we all fucking know, most bullies just need to get socked in the mouth. Like some, and really what, what I'm saying with, with that is, Sometimes aggression needs to be matched with aggression, even if you're not an aggressive person. This is what I've learned. If you're being approached that way from any type of energy, especially as a man, you may have to address it the same way because this kid is unconscious. Like I said, uh, prayers to him and his family. I hope he doesn't have any serious injuries, but I don't know how much I would call that bullying. The article said bullying 100 times. The article said bullying a hundred times. I don't know if that was bullying. Uh, somebody offered you to a fight and disrespected you in an aggressive, masculine way, and it's a man. You may just have to go for it. Like, you're going to have to do what you got to do. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it's not even about on some man shit, just for all the women out there, just so you can talk to your son. If 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 your young men aren't aware, sometimes the fight ain't even about who win or lose. It's just about if you're willing to get down or not. You know what I mean? Some Sometimes that's the goddamn point. In that situation, he could have lost that fight. He could have fought as hard as he could and lost that fight. Dude probably still would have thought twice before fucking with him. That's just man shit. You know what I mean? And, and I hope that young man has a father that sits him down and maybe he hasn't discussed anything with him about protecting himself. Because I think protecting, teaching his son how to protect himself is it's twofold. It comes with seeing his temperament, like slap boxing with him, messing with him a little bit, bringing him around men, seeing if he's confrontational or not, seeing if he's hands on or not, putting him in sports, putting him in boxing. When he gets of age, bring him to the shooting range. Right. Excuse me. And this is this is what being a man is, y'all. This is what being a man is. Do y'all know? Excuse me. I wasn't going to go here, but fuck it. Do y'all know when I first became a father, this is 2000, I would say after my mom died, yeah, this is 2001, 2002, where I have three, four kids at the time. I'm a young dude who was raised by his mom primarily, older brothers who tried their best, but they didn't have a father either. When I first had my kids, y'all, and this is one of the biggest reasons why the Melanated Combo which is what I'm doing now, speaking to y'all, the podcast, all the things I do, the Mel uh, Melanated Fathers of America, which is my organization where we do things in the community. All of this was spawned from my fathering, my, my fatherhood experience, being a young dude who was 23, 23, 24 years old with four kids. It, it, that was the best type of educational experience that I could have went through because I learned in hindsight now to a degree even though i tried my hardest i seen the blind spots i seen where it was things that i i wasn't educated on or i wasn't mature enough like you you pick the reason i wasn't necessarily able to give them certain types of tutelage in i think that's important for all men like you have to be aware that that's actually your job and at that age I didn't know, like I literally, like this, <laughs> I literally didn't know what a description of a man was. And I think when the internet first came out, I think I Googled it. Like, what is a man? This is some real shit, y'all. This is me being a dude raised by his mother, being like not an aggressive man, being like more of a smooth, laid back, allowing things to come to me type of individual. You know what I mean? Dealing with the fact that my mom just died. I don't I didn't have a blueprint. So I didn't see a man and a woman in the home. So I didn't know what the roles were specifically. You know what I mean? And I'm just dealing with my mother passing away. You see what I'm saying? But I I, I can recall the moments vividly because I can recall basically not knowing how to lead, not knowing which direction to take my family in, not being confident enough to address things in a particular manner. All this is man shit. We got too many 
like pussified young dudes in our community. Some, most, in my opinion, come from the same type of environments where it the the masculine energy may be falsified to a degree because it be on some street shit or some bravado shit, not necessarily a father who is in the home or around a lot, who love them, who give them good game about all the things that are necessary to kind of learn in this life. You know what I mean? That's, that's, we need to be aware of that, man. We need to be aware of that. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm always giving disclaimers because these are real people that we're talking about. I hope that young man is okay. His father, he could have a father at home, but the skills that we teach our children is what's going to make sure the future flourishes like that. That's what's going to make sure all of this shit keeps going on. And as men, if we don't lead the correct way, if we don't lead the way shit, you know what I mean? Then our families are doomed. It's really that simple. It, it again, it's about money and stability when it comes to a man but more than anything is about leadership. And this is what I didn't know. This is why I do this. This is why I talk to young dudes. This is why I'm going to continue to do what the fuck I'm doing because all of our men, all of our young men got to be on the same page. Like growing up in an environment where you don't have a father, where let's say you got family members who are selling drugs, your mom on drugs. This is dysfunctional. You need therapy, family. We, excuse me, we normalize all of our dysfunctions. We bottle them up, normalize them, put them to a beat. You know what I mean? <laughs> that That's how we address shit. When in actuality, that's traumatic. And it's okay to say that. You know what I mean? That's extremely traumatic. So our young men need to be prepared for life. And it's a it's a long process, right? So this this actually starts like the preparation for putting yourself in the mental space to go through each stage of this young man's life being tentative to what he actually needs. This starts before you even had a baby. I didn't think I was going to go here. God damn it. Let's get to it. This starts before you have the baby. Did you know that? Before your son is even born, young man, all young dudes listening, before your kid is even born, that's when you kind of determine what path you're going to go down. That's when you are making the preparation to be in a situation where you can focus on all those things. If you're a young father, and you're not planning for nothing, and you are not with the woman. Let, let's just say, let's go worst case scenario, right? You, a young dude, young black dude, have a baby, not with the woman, not necessarily focused on working, not necessarily serious about anything career-wise, or hasn't necessarily found a passion that you're pursuing full-time, full throttle. This, this is the probably the worst type of situation to begin being the man responsible for teaching another human being how to live right. You know what I mean? Think about how twisted that is. And this happens all too often in our community, in the black, in all communities, but I'm speaking to my people right now. This happens all too often where the parenting piece starts before the maturity piece starts. You know what I mean? Sometimes the parenting piece is before maturity. It's before relationship. Like we're putting parenting before the things that we need to make sure we can be a great fucking parent. You see what I'm saying? Because when I'm when I'm talking to y'all about putting your kid in boxing, seeing this temperament, it, it may seem simple to some people. If you a dude or a woman who didn't did things the correct way to a degree, it may seem simple, but if you put yourself in a particular position, some of these things you'll never even think about. You see what I'm saying? And then you send your kid off into the world and you have to deal with the results of whatever actually comes their way. And in actuality, it's really our job to prepare them in a lot of different ways. You know what I mean? So I don't want the bottom line is I don't want none of this bullying type of shit to happen to any of y'all kids. You know what I mean? And I was reading some stuff about bullying. Let, let me give y'all real quick. Hold on one second. The actual definition of bullying, if you ever wondered, because I didn't know I had a good idea, but I didn't know what the actual def definition was. So let me give you the definition of bully. This is the dictionary dot com de definition, a blustering, mean or predatory person who from a perceived position of relative power 
intimidates, abuses, harasses, coerces people, especially those considered unlikely to defend themselves. So check it out. And, I, and that's my first time reading it, actually. Check it out. So bully peak bullies for the most part pick on people they think are weak pick on people who are perceived as being weak based on their actions and if you have a young man if you have a son if you have a son there are ways you can instill confidence in your son attach him to his masculinity ask him questions give him compliments be confident yourself like be the example you want him to be you see what i'm saying like it's one one thing I always thought about, especially once my kids start getting older and I would have them in the house and I would be, you know, just me and them in the house or whatever. And I'm trying to make sure they do things the right way. And sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not. It just began to hit me just like my mom would, would tell me. Everything I'm doing is kind of preparing you for life outside of the house. Everybody in here loves you. Um, even if there's distress or issues, it's going to be handled in love for the most part. What we got to worry about is the motherfuckers outside of our house. Like your kids need to be prepared for that type of individual. You know what I mean? Your sons, daughters too, need to be prepared for that type of individual. And if we haven't settled down ourselves as far as um, career wise, whatever our passion may be whoever we're in a relationship with, if we're not settled as individuals, it'll make it really difficult to focus on anybody else, including your child. See? So my bigger point is fathers need to take this shit serious. I talk about racism a lot on my show, on my platform. Um, I don't fuck with white supremacy. I'm gonna always make it a point to speak to these things, correct? You know what I mean? That That's just how I'm gonna give it up. However, there's always things we can do to put ourselves in the best position to circumvent some of the things that happen to us. And I think from my experiences and everything that I've seen, one of the best ways to um, create an environment for your family where you can maneuver as much as possible around some of this bullshit is structure and stability. You know what I mean? instability and, and and you know i did a video about nick cannon several weeks ago and i'm getting all kind of motherfuckers coming at me and shit I, I i love the brother but the point i was making about nick cannon was kids should be in the same house now that doesn't happen all the time you can get with a woman everything seems good you guys plan on that being the case whatever married or not married and you end up breaking up y'all gotta now, now, now the kid goes to two separate houses. That happens all the time in America. No, no matter the race you are, that happens. However, I think everybody should make the most valid attempt possible to have their kids in the same house. There's nothing like that. You can, it, it, I don't ask any child that has to go to multiple homes. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how, how much, how many resources you have. There's nothing like the comfort of your kid coming home and you're there or or your kid coming home. And let's say you working or you doing some shit, knowing that you are coming there, that the, the whole parenting piece is made much easier by that. You could be a weekend daddy. You could be a daddy who gets kids every other day, every once a week or pick one of those scenarios. Let's admit, right, there's nothing like being in the home every day with your goddamn child. Nothing like being, you know what I mean? So th these are, if we all took that approach moving forward, like, cause I'm, I have five kids. I have my two oldest son, ha my two oldest children have kids as well. One of my kids, one of my sons has four, about to have four kids. One of my son had, one of my sons have two kids. You know what I mean? And my biggest issue with a young black man having a baby, right? My kids are not, is the, what everything I learned from my experience, right? Everything I learned from my experience, like the preparation piece to being a father is key. The 
the selection process, like the woman you select, because you are selecting the woman. We sometimes as men, we be on some bullshit where a, a girl get pregnant and we upset. We threatening her. We doing all this foul shit when you could have prevented that yourself. Granted, there's hella more types of birth control for women than men. But in general, a man wear a condom, bro. We, you there there's things you can do to prevent a disease or a baby from coming into this world you see what i'm saying so if we begin to take that process more serious the mating process not you want to have fun and fuck around with whoever you want to fuck around with whatever this is a free country do you i don't judge nobody but having kids when you're not ready having kids when you're not in a relationship when there hasn't even been a relationship established there there in some instances you're setting your kid up to fail in certain instances you're stacking it against your kids to a degree you know what i mean every every human in america to thrive successfully to to thrive like to go in the correct direction regardless of race resources are necessary you can't really um put a kid in in the proper position in their life if you don't have resources so it's up to us men and women but it's up we we have to think about all of this shit before we have kids i'm tired of seeing my young men repeating the same cycle that i did where you have a kid before you even know who you are now you're learning how to be a man while teaching him how to be a kid what kind of shit is that you see what i'm saying you see what i'm saying these are decisions we're making now of course on top of that, we have to deal with the institutions that are in place that treat us a particular way, but we're kind of making it worse when we're introducing this young black child to this world that's already flawed, that's already see that already sees them in a particular way. And then you add to that by not positioning them to have resources. See? So you're actually feeding them to the wolves to a degree. So people, I tell people all the time, if you like, I think really loving your kids, this is my opinion, family. I think really loving your kids is, like I said before, starts before you have your kids. Starts in how you live your life. Starts in, especially as a man, like chasing your purpose before you even consider having a baby. Right? Like chasing your purpose before you even put that ideal into your mind because you understand that if I get to the place I'm trying to go, and then have a baby, everything this kid needs is going to be right there at his footsteps. I'm going to make sure I court the right woman. You feel me? I'm going to make sure because that's all my, that, that selection process is on me. These are all things we got to think about, like not just indiscriminately out here fucking. Now, again, have fun, young men, do what you want to do, but wear a condom. Be, be aware all the time of how small or quick decisions in the moment can affect your future for years to come. And that can be with a woman, that can be with some street shit, that can be with anything, but we need to make sure the young people are changing their state of mind to a degree because we ain't gonna be here. You know what I mean? Like I'm 40, a lot of y'all getting older, we are, shit, time is fleeing at this point. And all we got is our, my grandkids and my kids and you know what I mean? And me personally, y'all, I be feeling bad, man, because I was a brother who, and I'm, <laughs> shit, I'm spilling a lot of my shit. I don't give a fuck. I'm, I was a brother who had kids in my early 20s, late teens, early 20s, just working jobs. I went to college and I'm just working jobs, doing what I can do. You know what I mean? But I'm in the, 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 um, looking at tomorrow type of shit i'm not looking five years down the line 10 years down the line i'm struggling i'm paying hell of child support new relationship like i'm i put myself in this position where i didn't give myself a chance to breathe and really look inward and figure out what i wanted to do with myself and want to yeah because sometimes people will say you'll be like what do you want to be or what are you inspired by what you know what moves you well my kids move me if that's it Mm, that's not going to be necessarily a happy life. I'm sorry to tell you that. You need some shit for yourself. You need something for you. Everybody needs something that they would do for free, that they're passionate about, 
and you just hope that you can get money from that shit too. But I think that's damn near the key to life. Everybody having something that's theirs that that they love to do, whatever that may be. It doesn't even have to generate money, but if if it puts you at ease, if you love it, everybody needs that. You know what I mean? And me focusing on being a father at such a young age and dealing with the the situation I put my in that I put myself in with these women, dealing with the fact that I've never seen a man interact with kids, so I'm going off of everything I've seen. I'm reading books. I'm trying to figure it out. You see what I'm saying? This isn't this isn't the best way to start your life in America, especially if you're black, because having having kids without being married or having teenage babies this again all races do it but all races aren't disenfranchised so you just may fuck around and put your son in the belly of the beast because you didn't want to get your shit right you feel me so this is your brother harrison man this is the melanated convo podcast do me a favor family like the video share the video if you're listening to this on one of the digital platforms this show this platform that i have here is available on spotify it's available on google podcast it's available on overcast it's available on what, what, what's the other one stitcher all where anywhere podcasts can be heard from a digital platform you can find this show so continue to rock with your boy and let's protect our babies man like i'm i'm the last few videos i've been doing be been about young black boys going through things outside of our home right in uh, lead shit <laughs> that's what if, if if i could go back and tell 21 year old harrison 22 year old harrison what's the best thing you can do right now to put yourself in the best position to be at ease with your situation to maneuver through your situation as best as possible, like while still caring about the feelings and the and 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 everything going on with the women, with your kids, like how can you maneuver in your situation and still be what you need to be? You know what I mean. And the biggest thing I would say is, damn, I forgot what I was going to say. the The biggest thing I would say is the you know what I mean to make sure that you do what's best for your family when you become a father if you would a woman or not is you have to lead you have to be a man of your word and you have to lead you have to lead you have to lead women can lead too but i've learned like hard lessons in relationships the man should be the leader and this ain't got nothing to do with money or none of that just the direction that y'all going in should be orchestrated by the man and then the woman is right there and y'all can do it together boom 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 that's how it's supposed to work but you got to lead young men you have to lead this ain't got nothing to do with money this is this has to do with insight this has to do with decision making this has to do with logic you feel me like women naturally is just a little more emotional about decisions things that happen things that come up you know what i mean they approach it from more if of an emotional standpoint at times and at and that's cool that's what i, I this is a hard ass lesson i had to learn and that's cool you see what i'm saying that's cool but as a man you got to be calm you got to be patient you got to kind of dissect what you're looking at so you can make the best decision for your family like i was telling everybody like when i was younger and i was trying to figure out how to be the best father to these kids my shit freezing up and i was trying to figure out how to be the best father to these kids i was emotional too you see what i'm saying hold on one second sorry sorry about that y'all hold on one second hold on one second digital audience you can still hear me the video is buffering i had to switch my wi-fi out but we need to be leaders we need to be leaders and we need to do our best to stick to our word like some men and i'm i've learned as i'm 
getting older and, and, and getting up there in age, some dudes just kind of do that shit better than others. You know what I mean? <laughs> some men d didn't really have to try too hard to do those things in particular, just based on the kind of person they were. But for me, like leading a family and a woman in the right direction, I had no idea what was necessary to do it because I never seen it. Like my brothers, they had women and they, you know what I mean? And I seen them interact with women, but never in a home environment with like with things that happen in the house and how to maneuver and how to put things in place. I never really seen that. So I had to learn like the hard, 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 hard way. But last thing I'm gonna say, we can help our young men. That's that's the beauty of all of this. We can help our young men. If you a father and you got a young man, start check yourself. Make sure you have these tools. You see, because you ain't gonna be able to pass it on to him if you don't got it. Make sure you got these tools. Make sure you listening. Make sure you being logical. Make sure you doing what's necessary to lead your family. You see what I'm saying? Because everything going on outside, everything with these cops, everything with the prison system, the, the institutionalized racism that can come your way at any time, how do we prepare ourselves for, for all of this? Like what, what state of mind do we put ourselves in so we can be as like not affected by some of this stuff as much as possible? And to me, being in your home, being a father, being everything you can be to your kid while still working on yourself to be the best version of yourself you can be is the way to go. This is your brother Harrison, Melanated Convo Podcast. Continue to rock with your boy, man. I'm out.